Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Nicole Linton? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crime, then offer my analysis. Nicole Linton grew up in Mount Vernon, New York. Her parents had immigrated from Jamaica. She was one of three daughters. In 2007, Nicole graduated from Howard University in Washington, D.C. with a degree in marketing. After this, she worked as a sales manager for a General Motors dealership in Westchester County, New York. At some point in her career, she worked in a series of jobs as a waitress in New York City clubs, the kind of clubs that involve a scarcity of apparel. Later, she changed her career goals to nursing and went to nursing school. She worked as a technician during her time in school, then worked in an intensive care unit. In 2013, Nicole moved to Laredo, Texas, and worked at the Laredo Medical Center as an operating room technician. She traveled back and forth to Houston in order to earn her bachelor's degree in nursing. After graduating, Nicole moved to Houston and studied at the University of Texas Health Science Center. Nicole appeared to be performing quite well as far as her career advancement, but she was having some trouble with her driving and was involved in several motor vehicle collisions. In April of 2017, Nicole's boyfriend was killed in a motorcycle collision when he was visiting Jamaica. Her boyfriend had won a silver medal in the high jump at the 2008 Olympics. Nicole had planned on marrying him. In May of 2018, Nicole had a panic attack and ran out of her apartment. The police managed to locate her, but when they approached her, she climbed on top of one of the police vehicles. She was arrested for disorderly conduct. Nicole was taken to a mental health facility. A few days after this incident, she told family members that she was uneasy because the spirit of her dead grandmother had possessed her. The next day, she visited a mental hospital. She banged her head into a glass partition as she was complaining about the police and the Supreme Court. As she was getting stitches for her injuries, she was singing Bob Marley songs. Nicole was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and prescribed psychotropic medication. More than a year after her diagnosis, one of Nicole's neighbors called family members after seeing Nicole running around her apartment complex while not wearing any clothing. Nicole was involuntarily committed to a mental hospital. She had stopped taking her medications. She was having trouble sleeping and thought that her family members were stealing from her. In 2020, Nicole became a traveling ICU nurse. She worked in various states like North Carolina, Maryland, Georgia, Texas, and California. In 2021, she was working in a hospital in Los Angeles. She was not employed by the hospital, Rather, her employer was the traveling nurse company. Nicole's permanent address was still in Texas. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. On August 4, 2022, Nicole went to work at the hospital in Los Angeles. During her lunch break, she connected with her sister via FaceTime. Nicole was completely naked during this conversation. She indicated that she was returning to Houston and getting married soon, saying her sister should meet her at the altar. According to court documents, Nicole's sister ignored her behavior, believing that Nicole was acting erratically in an effort to trouble her. Not long after this conversation, Nicole was operating her black Mercedes-Benz on La Brea Avenue in Los Angeles. At about 1.30 p.m., Nicole approached the intersection with Slauson Avenue, traveling at about 90 miles per hour. The light in her direction had been red for nine seconds, yet Nicole plowed right through the intersection slamming into at least five other vehicles which were crossing in front of her. At least three of these vehicles caught fire. Five people were killed, including a woman who was pregnant. Nicole's Mercedes caught on fire and came to a rest after hitting a light pole. She had a broken wrist and a broken foot. No drugs or alcohol were detected in Nicole's system. Nicole was evaluated by a physician after her arrest. The physician said that Nicole had no recollection of the events that led to the collision. Although there's really no way that this can be determined for certain. It seems like this is something that Nicole reported 
and the physician was simply taking her word for it. She said she only remembered lying on the pavement and seeing her car on fire. Nicole was charged with six counts of murder and five counts of gross vehicular manslaughter. She is facing 90 years to life in prison. She agreed not to practice nursing while her case is pending. Considering that she is in jail, this concession appears to be academic. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, Nicole made a positive impression on many people who interacted with her. She was described as highly motivated, inviting, and kind. She was an extremely hard worker who was motivated to succeed. At the same time, some people who knew Nicole had concerns, even before clear mental health symptoms were evident. For example, people said that Nicole had a tendency to become gloomy. She would get upset about being alone. At one point, Nicole became trapped in a cycle of partying and drinking. She would frequently visit clubs. Item number two, Nicole's mental health symptoms appeared after her boyfriend was killed in a motorcycle collision. Over the course of four years, her symptoms became progressively worse, and she was non-compliant with treatment. There were multiple behaviors that appeared to indicate that Nicole was disconnected from reality. For example, believing that her dead grandmother was possessing her, accusing her family members of stealing from her, being arrested for standing on a police vehicle, running around without wearing any clothes. When she was in Los Angeles, she said her co-workers were acting weird toward her. Nicole tried to harm herself on several occasions, and of course, she was a terrible driver. Which brings me to item number three. The prosecution said that Nicole had been involved in 13 collisions in Texas and California. Just a few examples. In 2013, when she was in Laredo, she did not accelerate when a traffic light in front of her turned green, and a car slammed into her. She was not found to be at fault. In Houston in 2016, the same thing happened, and once again it was determined that she was not responsible. In 2020, she was involved in a collision that totaled two vehicles. Her defense argued that Nicole's driving history was not as bad as the state represented. They said that she was involved in no more than three at-fault collisions, with the most recent being in 2014. I know that they think they were helping Nicole, but they weren't really making a good case. She doesn't really seem like a safe driver. Three at-fault collisions is pretty concerning. In addition, many people are involved in collisions for which they are cleared of responsibility, when in reality, they often did something wrong that contributed to the collision. There is a difference between being not guilty and innocent. I'm amazed that any insurance company would still issue a policy for Nicole after 13 collisions, or if they would, that she was fine with paying such a high premium. Although, Nicole probably made good money as a nurse. This brings me to item number four. In the two years preceding the fatal collision, Nicole had six different nursing jobs in five different states. Many people wondered how this was possible, including Nicole's own defense attorneys. Nicole did not have any criminal convictions. She had been arrested for disorderly conduct, but I imagine with her mental health situation, the case was dismissed. When considering the lack of criminal convictions and the fact that Nicole was able to evade responsibility for several of her motor vehicle collisions, it makes sense that her employer did not have any reason to deny her employment. They're not allowed to discriminate against her based on her mental health status unless the symptoms interfere with the core responsibility of her job. Nicole was traveling around quite a bit. She probably didn't have one dedicated supervisor who could keep an eye on her all the time. Like nobody was there to piece together all of her unusual behavior. No one was there to detect the pattern. When somebody's only working at a facility on a temporary basis, their coworkers don't tend to complain as much about their unusual behavior because they know that the troubled employee will be reassigned shortly anyway. Just like Nicole retained her license to drive, she retained her license to function as a nurse. Nicole should not have been driving a vehicle or been functioning as a nurse, but she was doing both on the very day that she killed several people. Item number five, it seems clear that Nicole is headed for a mental health defense. We already see the report about not remembering what happened leading up to the collision. I think it's likely that Nicole did not remember what happened right before the collision, it's not unusual for survivors of a motor vehicle collision to forget the 10 to 15 seconds preceding the trauma. 
But that doesn't make this a good defense. It doesn't mean that Nicole wasn't responsible. It just means she cannot remember what happened. Even still, I imagine that her defense is going to argue that Nicole was not responsible for her behavior because she is mentally ill. She has a four-year history of bipolar disorder and clearly has some pronounced and disruptive symptoms. The difficulty for the defense is that it looks like Nicole may have deliberately plowed into that intersection, in addition to her strange behavior right before the collision, like contacting her sister while not wearing any clothing. There are reports that Nicole had just had an argument with her boyfriend. Perhaps this is what precipitated her lethal driving behavior, like it was some type of fear of abandonment, an impulsive reaction in response to the perception of an unstable romantic relationship. This brings me to item number six. Some people have wondered if Nicole has a few borderline personality characteristics, like impulsivity, the tendency to harm oneself, and a fear of abandonment. This is consistent with the argument with the boyfriend theory, as well as reports that Nicole was worried about being alone. Perhaps when her boyfriend died in 2017, Nicole perceived this as the ultimate rejection. His loss triggered borderline traits, which led to increasingly reckless behavior. Perhaps these traits and the stress she was under activated the bipolar disorder symptoms. This led to the psychosis. Bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder are considered distinct classifications, but the degree of overlap between the two disorders has led to various theories that the disorders are connected in some way. Some researchers have even theorized that borderline should be considered part of the bipolar spectrum. They argue that individuals with borderline are at a higher risk to develop bipolar disorder, much like individuals with paranoid personality disorder are more likely to develop schizophrenia. This is an interesting theory, but research on this topic has demonstrated that bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder are independent. Some people may look at the 10 to 25% co-occurrence rates between bipolar disorder and borderline and say there must be some connection. I think the connection is that mental health clinicians don't always understand the differences between the disorders. Diagnosing is one of the weakest areas of the mental health professions due to its complexity. Clinicians look at the symptoms and go back and forth between bipolar disorder and borderline, unable to construct a clear clinical image that strongly leans one way or the other. Another major problem is the fact that borderline is viewed negatively by society. Clinicians are aware of this perception and therefore avoid giving clients a diagnosis of borderline. The clinicians think that they are helping their clients, but they are not. If a client is diagnosed with bipolar disorder when they actually have borderline personality disorder, the client is going to receive treatment which is not tailored to the disorder that they actually have. Both disorders are serious, and both come about due to factors that are not the client's fault. Even still, a person needs to be responsible managing their symptoms, which brings me to my final thoughts. Nicole Linton killed innocent people using one of the most dangerous weapons that people regularly have access to, a motor vehicle. Her victims were just minding their own business, going about their day, when they were struck by a 4,000-pound missile. Nicole made her problem into their problem, which is selfishness that society cannot tolerate. Regardless of arguments with boyfriends, conversations without clothing, wedding plans, or being possessed by dead relatives, a person with a mental disorder bears some responsibility in maintaining compliance with treatment. Society is sick of excuses after horrific events, and it has every right to be. Those are my thoughts on the case of Nicole Linton. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.